Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I will be talking about pod priority. This is a continuation of the scheduling series that I'm currently doing. And we will dive a little bit into how pod priority can be used to evict other pods as well. So let's uh, jump right into it. First of all, pod priority is how we indicate the importance of pods relative to each other. Lower priority pods can be preempted for higher priority pods, and preemption is the process of evicting a node, a pod from a node, in order to then schedule a new pod. Priority class dictates pod priority. So priority class is an object in Kubernetes that we can use to define the level of priority of a pod or a set of pods. And then within our pod definition, we will use the priority class name field in order to refer to the priority class. So you can imagine we may have a, a group of pods that all share the same priority class. We may have um, multiple deployments even that all share the same priority class. So this is a, a useful way of kind of grouping those entities and not having uh, replicated uh, logic within all of our, our pods definitions. Now, what are the fields in a priority class? The first one to be aware of is the value field. This is a integer between zero and one billion. So as you can see here, it's set to a million in this, this case. Global default, this is an optional field that is uh, by default it's set to false but if you set it to true essentially what it'll do is it will set all of the uh, fields all of the pods in the cluster to have the priority that we have defined in this particular priority class we can only set one uh, priority class to be the global default at any one time and by default, pods actually have a priority of zero, so it can be we can override that if we want to. Uh, we just need to set uh, this field to true. <clears throat> Description uh, obviously is just information about what the priority class is used for and whatever information you want to put in there uh, for your uh, fellow Kubernetes admins to to be aware of what the purpose is. Then we have preemption policy. So when we are setting up a priority class, we can decide to either allow preemption, which means uh, if we have a higher priority pod being scheduled, it will potentially evict lower priority pods in order to be scheduled. But we can also uh, choose not to do that. So if we have higher priority pods, they will actually be still be given preference in terms of the uh, scheduling queue. But if we set preemption policy to never, they won't actually go away and evict lower priority pods. So uh, that is one important setting that you'll have when you're setting up your priority class. Now, what does the pod definition itself look like? Uh, really, it's a standard pod definition. The only difference is we have this priority class name field, which refers to the priority class. In fact, this field here, metadata name, high priority. If we had one called high priority, then that's what we would be referring to here. Okay, fairly simple, that one. Now, preemption. So if no node is found that satisfies pod requirements, then we will trigger preemption logic. And what, the, what that logic does is it looks for a node where the eviction of a pod or multiple pods will result in the ability for the scheduler to schedule the pod we are currently trying to schedule. So it's not the case that we just go around and remove a pod and then check if we can schedule and then remove another pod, check if we can schedule and so on. The calculation is done beforehand to ensure that we're not just evicting pods with no benefit. We terminate these pods and schedule 
the high priority points. That's uh, obviously the last step after we've determined where we can actually uh, evict pods with the result being um, the ability to schedule the new pod. Now there are a few additional considerations that we should take into account when talking about preemption. The first one is the pod disruption budget. So if we have to find a pod disruption budget for our application, uh, this, this, first of all, will set parameters as to the maximum amount of pods within our uh, replicated application, like a deployment or a replica set, that can be offline due to uh, voluntary interruptions by the Kubernetes system. So let's say we have an application that's running 10 different pods, and we want to say, okay, we want at least eight of these running at any given time, regardless of what's happening in the cluster. So the preemption process and the priority process tries to take all of this into account, but it is not guaranteed. So at the end of the day, higher priority pods will always take precedence over lower priority pods. Even if those low, lower priority pods are part of a deployment or a replica set, that has defined a pod disruption budget. Next, interpod affinity on lower priority pods. So there may be a scenario where we are trying to schedule a pod onto a node that has another pod, but we're dependent on that pod based on affinity. So if you're trying to schedule a, a, a pod onto a node that is dependent on an existing pod on that node. Now, you may run into a scenario where the only way you can actually fit that new pod onto the node in terms of resource requirements or some other scheduling requirement is to evict the other pod. Well, in that case, we won't evict the other pod. We just won't schedule uh, the new pod that we're trying to schedule because if we evicted the other pod, then we're going to break uh, the pod affinity rule and we're basically back in square one. We're, uh, violating the constraints that we have set for our application so we we will not schedule the pod in that situation then there is cross node preemption so we may have a scenario where we are trying to deploy uh, a pod and the only way that we can deploy the pod is if a pod on another node is evicted and this uh, may be the case if we have set up uh, cross zone affinity or if we have set up topology spread constraints and I've talked about topology spread constraints in a prior video but for example if we have uh, reached our, our limit of pods in a particular zone and we're trying to um, add a new pod and that pod can only be deployed to this particular zone for some reason then our only option would be to remove a pod on, on another node potentially essentially that functionality isn't supported so um, cross node preemption is something that is not going to take place if we run into a situation where it's required the the pod will simply not be scheduled so uh, these are just things to to bear in mind when you are using uh, preemption and pod priority so i hope that was useful if you have any questions, please do leave a comment. I'll get straight back to you. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.